out of the new book. This is why you broke. We call our beast from the east. So please sit back and give a warm welcome to Oleda. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Shelly Yan. How's everyone doing this evening? Hope you guys had an amazing, amazing day. Um, well, we do these webinars, workshops every Wednesday, and our goal is really to educate our community, right? Hi, Elijah. Hi, Daph. Thanks for joining us on Facebook. We are streaming live, guys. And because we want to make sure that everybody knows this information. So for some of you that do follow me on Facebook, um, share the live on Facebook. So tonight we're going to talk about a special topic that is really, truly dear to me. Um, because I've been impacted by this firsthand and doing this business really, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it's overwhelming sometimes when you see and hear stories of, you know, people going through certain things in life that they really, you know, if they had things in place, you know, it could have gone a different route. So with that being said, let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, can you guys see the t the screen? Health and wealth, right? We want to have these coins, but we want to make sure that we live long enough to enjoy these coins. We want both health and wealth. So, welcome to our workshop. We do this, like I said, every Wednesday. And yes, we are flooded with information every day. But you know what? There's a lot of people out there giving information but some of them are not financial advisors they're not even licensed but they're just putting information out there so we want to make sure that we are giving proper information as licensed financial professionals and this is why we do this every week coming on here just giving free information to educate our fellow co-workers colleagues family friends and everyone right we're here to help you take a total look at your picture from a holistic standpoint. And our workshops are solely to educate, guys. Educate and empower you so you can become your own money manager. Guys, four years ago, you know, I was able to fire Jason, right? I was able to fire him because now I could do my own money management, right? That's super powerful when you can manage your own finance so you don't have to rely on someone who tells you something and you just go along with it because you know you trust them so it's all about controlling your finances which ultimately helps you control your future so tonight workshop what will you learn financial importance and impact oops let's go back Okay, you'll learn financial importance and impact of your health, right? Because your health is correlated to your wealth and vice versa. There are strategies to transfer and preserve your wealth, right? I'm seeing this firsthand with clients as we speak. And also ensuring that your last wishes are prepared and carried out, as well as understanding the inevitably and impact of medical expenses, y'all, right? So everyone has a story. And it seems that everyone has a story when it comes to caring for their elderly. How many of you right now, either on Zoom or on social media, um, are tasked with caring for a loved one, caring for an elderly, or maybe your mom or your parents are caring for an elder person, right? Um, whether it's in a nursing home or a facility, like I said, I've, I've, I'm experiencing this firsthand, having to deal with my brother in a nursing home, double amputee. Um, or maybe it might be caring for your parents or your grandparents who are going to move in or at some point they're going to move in with you. Like I know at some point my mom is going to move in with me, right? Because I don't want her to be in a nursing home. 
Um, and you may have to, some of us put our career on hold or put our jobs on hold, right? And ultimately, of course, a constant medical care costs, right? So we all gonna have a story and if we know what to do ahead of time, you know, our story could be a lot different and better, right? So the oldest living person, y'all, if you're female right now, shout out to all the females because statistics shows that we are living longer, okay? We are living longer. I just got off a Zoom with a client and I said to this mom, I said, listen, if your husband doesn't want to do X, Y, Z, you do it for you because women are living longer. The oldest living person in the world is a lady who is called Kin Nataka and she is 118 years old. Guys, that is scary that we could actually live that long. So on one hand, it's good, but you better have your coins to pay for all those years, right? Without your health, what is good? What is good is our fortune to enjoy. So you got to have both. You got to have the money and you got to have the health, right? Likewise, our wealth can greatly affect our health. So we're going to look at some affordability. We want to eat healthy. Organic is not cheap right organic meals is not cheap right processed food fast food is cheap so again affordability and what about availability of options what kind of care will you get the people that tells me oh i'm gonna have you know government aid and this kind of you know government stuff and job stuff i'm like it's good but what kind of care what kind of care are you gonna get are you gonna get the best care the best doctor right because the best is going to cost, right? Medical bills are not cheap. And then researching links for faster physical and mental age. So we hope to live long, but the truth is we can pass at any given time. So we're going to develop a strategy now while we're young and while we're healthy before it's too late. So how do you build your financial foundation? First, you start from the bottom, which is proper protection. You got to have proper protection, guys. Proper protection is super important. That's the foundation, right? That's the foundation. Then you want to make sure you have your debt under control. Then manage your emergency fund, make sure you have enough emergency fund, right? And then at the top, investment. But you see, most people don't even know this information. They don't even know this, this step that I just showed you. And so some people start at the top with investment. And then now, guess what? Their investment doesn't pan out. They lose some money. And because they never really set up an emergency fund, now they have to whip out the credit card or borrow money and their debt is even higher, right? But it all starts with proper protection. So wealth has three phases. Let's talk about those phases. You have the accumulation phase, right? When you're putting money in to grow, you're accumulating it. Then you have the distribution when you're going to start taking out. And I love talking about one of our particular product because first we're going to stack a lot of coins in there. But at some point, we're going to start taking that money out to spend on ourselves. And then you have... After the distribution phase, you have the estate transfer because yes, at some point we're all gonna die, right? So let's make sure that we're properly transferring that money. How many have a will or a trust? How many of you? And you could put it in the comment. If you're on Facebook, you can put it in the comment. 
How many of you have a will or a trust already set up? If you do not have it, get in touch with the person who invited you. And maybe you have it, but you just didn't set it up. Super, super, super important, especially a will. Because guys, did you know that if you pass away today, your husband name could be on that bank account and the bank will not give it unless you have a will or trust, right? How many have someone who knows where their documents are? We see this all the time. People pass away and their kids or spouse are tumbling the whole house looking for documents, right? Who would know what needs to be done if either yourself or a loved one pass away? Guys, this is why we got to put things in place, right? We have to put things in place. So it doesn't matter the size of your estate, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, if you have a dollar, five dollar, right? At some point, it's going to be transferred. And that is your legacy. How much are you guys going to transfer? And do you have it set up correctly to transfer? So building your legacy has three simple points. You want to first protect yourself, guys. Please protect yourself first. It starts with you, right? I was literally just telling a client, it's all about you first. You got to make sure you protect yourself first. And your assets while you're alive. If somebody tries to sue you, right? It's protected. They ain't getting a dime, right? And then you also want to make sure that your stuff is organized, right? Clearly organization and communication. It has to be organized so that you can find stuff. And then ultimately passing it down to the next generation. How many of you right now can honestly tell me, right, that you have maybe a great, great, great grandparent or a grandparent who passed something down to you before you were even born, before, before they even knew of your existence, they had things set up in place to pass to the next generation. Guys, isn't that powerful? That somebody is putting things away for the next unborn generation. That's what we hope to do here by educating families of first, yeah, protect yourself first and your assets while you're alive. But someday when we pass on, there's going to be something there waiting for the next generation when they're born. Super powerful. Right? Super, super powerful. I love this. Now, preserving your estate. How do you do that? Estate planning is a process of determining your distribution upon, upon debt. So... Everything that you own, right, you want to make sure that literally it's going to the right people that you want it to go to. Estate plan is not just for the wealthy. I used to think the wealthy are the ones that who needs a will and a trust. No, at least a, a will, everybody needs because they have a bank account, right? Everybody has an estate. It's just that some people estate are bigger than others, but everybody has an estate. And who gets to make the call? You, if you set things up right. You're in control. You get to make the call. And if you don't put things in place, oh boy, it's going to be a mess, right? Because if you don't put things in place or you don't have a plan, guys, guess who will? The government. The government has a say if you don't put things in place. And nine out of ten times, it may not be in your favor. It may not be what you would have wanted, but you're gone. So because you didn't plan correctly, the government is going to say what needs to be done. So estate planning worksheet to ensure that your property will go to whoever you choose when you die. This is why I'm a big proponent of everybody setting up a will. Guys, if you do not have a will, Get in touch with us so we can help you get a will in place. At the bare minimum, you need a will, right? But now if you got some assets and you want to avoid probate court, you will need a trust, right? 
I would not want my family to have to try to make decisions for me, so I will fill out a personal directive when it comes to your health. And you could also give someone authority, right, to manage your finance or your affairs by having a power of attorney. These are all things, guys. Power of attorney, will, trust. These are all things that we can help you with, right? We can help you with it. Don't forget, there's other documents, HIPAA form, guardianship, kids travel consent. There's a slew of other things, right, that you can put in place as well. So what are some things to consider? Without proper document in place, if you have children, those of you that are married or remarried or were married, if you have children, and you remarry, right? The assets go to your current spouse. Does a step parent have any obligation to support your biological? No. So guys, I'm telling you, if you have kids and you are married, and maybe this is your second marriage, your first marriage kid is not gonna be obliged to get anything. If you pass away, you don't have the right documents in place. Your husband or your spouse, the current partner, is not obliged to give anything to your first set of kids. So if you have kids, please make sure you have these things in place, right? If you leave your assets to your child and they're a minor, right? They're a minor. This is why when I sit with clients and they tell me they want to leave stuff with their kids, I said, hey, do you know your child is on the 18th? He's not going to get anything if you're gone right if you have a child and you leave assets to them and the child is a minor the court will appoint a guardian that will take care of them and their assets who will that be and what would that child inherit when they reach legal age hey if you didn't set it up the court might appoint somebody that may not be fit or might not be what you would have wanted right because now when you're die, dead and gone, everybody's going to come out to the woodworks, especially if there's money involved. Everybody's going to want to raise your child because there's money involved. So you got to have these things in place. And if you travel, what documents do you have in place if you or your family needs medical attention? So, Phenomal Concierge, one of my all-time topic and product. Planning someone's funeral is a headache, guys. It is a headache, right? None of us are prepared for this. It doesn't matter how much funeral you help plan, nobody will ever be prepared for this. So funeral concierge is a service to help the client and their family during the planning and preparation stage. And it's one of their toughest times in their life, so they're not gonna be really thinking straight to take care of this. But nine out of 10 times we have to do it. So by having a funeral concierge, let them do all the work for you. Let them plan the funeral. Let them deal with the implementation and the negotiation for everything, right? They're there to give you 24 seven assistance. Long after your loved ones are buried, you can still call them 24 seven to speak with them for anything, right? And they also provide beneficial tools. It's so much more, right, that they do for us. So is it worth it to have these things in place just for peace of mind? What is the cost of not having these things in place? What is the cost? It's going to cost you time. It's going to cost you money. And it's going to cost you your sanity. So it's worthwhile just getting it put in place while we're here, right? And the best time is to start now, right? So protection through prevention, having better health care will cost less. Having better, health, having better health can cost you less in retirement. X-rays cost of x-rays, medical costs, right? 
the sicker and unhealthy you are in retirement is going to be more expensive so you want to be in good health in your latter years or in your retirement years otherwise it's going to cost you because you're constantly going to be going to the doctor medication treatment and most people don't know but their biggest expense when they're in retirement aside from your mortgage or your rent is going to be your medical bills right so the number one reason why people are filing for bankruptcy guys google it the number one reason why people are filing for bankruptcy is medical bills medical related costs according to an academic research study 66.5 percent of all personal bankruptcy is directly linked to medical bills medical expense healthcare costs so if we know this this is why everybody needs long-term care because it, if you don't have long-term care it's gonna wipe out your wealth people are going bankrupt in america because of medical bills because of medical bills did you guys know that it's crazy that you could have a lot of money and the minute you get hit with something like cancer heart attack stroke your money is going to be gone in two years medical related costs expensive is the number one reason why personal bankruptcy so if you know this there should be no question about having long-term care living benefits chronic critical most people don't even know that every seven to ten seconds seven to ten seconds in the united states someone is being diagnosed with heart attack cancer and stroke so if we know these things are bound to happen we got to put things in place to offset otherwise we're going to be not only broke you know we're not going to get the best care either we're not so it's going to cost us retirement is expensive because most of us are already not saving enough right and if we're living longer we may outlive our money and we're really still even going to be broke i spoke to a client yesterday they're on a, a pension they're getting about 16 16 and change almost 1700 from their job pension now back in the days pension used to be a big thing and a great thing but today when somebody tells me they have a pension my mindset is different because i already know the calculations they're not going to be getting no big money from their pension the only good thing is that it's going to be forever but how much is it it's not even enough to pay your rent or your mortgage especially if you're living in major states like new york california georgia dc it's not enough so when someone tells us that they got a pension little do they know yes it's good that they have a pension for lifetime but my bigger question is how much are you gonna get how much and this is why we see people still working even in their retirement years even if it's just a part-time gig right they're still coming back out medicare medicaid medi what a lot of people don't even understand this right medicare is your health insurance after your age 65 right once you're age 65 you're going to get medicare everybody gets that right after age 65. now medicaid right is for certain groups of individual based on their income and assets so if you have a lot of money you ain't getting medicaid right the rich people they know what to do to hide their assets 
I have a client right now as we speak dealing with this situation. Wealthy people and their asset is on the verge because medical expense is not cheap. So for you to get Medicaid, you have to pretty much be like a pauper. You have to like barely have like $2,000 or 1500 in your bank account. You ain't getting Medicaid unless you really know this information and you're hiding your assets, right? You gotta hide your assets so good that they can't even question it. But where? Where do you hide your assets, right? Because if you have things in your name and it's like in a bank account or a mutual fund or 401k or any one of those, you can't hide those, right? So keep in mind, right, my great aunt, firsthand, I experienced this with her. She and her husband did really well for themselves. They had a couple of homes and she wasn't able to get anything from the government, no Medicaid, because she has assets. So she had to pay out of pocket for everything and her money went really quick, right? It went really quick at the mercy of sometimes you're even cutting costs when you're going, when you're deciding which treatment to take, which hospital to go to, which doctor to see, what specialist, all of those things. When you have money and you don't have long-term care in place, you have the money, but you don't want to spend it because it's, you're literally watching it dwindle away in front of your eyes because healthcare is so expensive. This is why I'm a big proponent for everybody having long-term care, living benefit, credit call, because we know that it's coming. It's just a matter of when it's coming. So let's prepare and put things in place to offset because I promise you it's going gonna, it's gonna to wipe out our money in a matter of months and statistics shows two years. Two years. We're going to be broke, right? And now we got to have to deal with the Medicaid because we broke. And then what type of quality treatment are we going to get? Super big deal. Super big deal, guys. Right? Amazing. So this is why you got to learn this stuff. Right? It's important. Medicare, unless you're still covered by your employer's health plan, you must enroll in Medicare before you can even get additional private Medicare supplement. Now, Medicare has four parts. You have part A, which pretty much pays for all your hospital visits, inpatient care, and it's free for most people. Part B is gonna deal with your doctor's visit and the outpatient care, and this is not free. You have to pay out of pocket, right? The standard monthly premium is about $148 or depending on your income in 2021. And then part D is for drugs. And we already know these drugs are expensive. So everything here is going to cost you money, even if you're getting some help, right? Now, how do you apply for this? The enrollment period is usually... A total of seven months, three months before or after your 65th birthday. So if you know anyone that's, you know, 65, approaching 65, this would be something that they would want to start applying for. Um, now, who is covered or not? Unfortunately, Medicare doesn't cover everything. So this is not a big misconception. They think they're going to get the bl card blanche and they could just whip out their health card and they're going to be, everything is going to be covered. No, it doesn't work like that, right? Anything with the government is not card blanche, right? You're going to be surprised to learn that there's certain things you have to come out of pocket for. So your annual yearly wellness visit, yes, that's covered, right? Your dental dental cleaning filling dentures are these all things that old people will need hell yeah but guess what you're gonna have to pay for it yourself what about your eye 
eye exam and eye prescription and eyeglasses, you're going to have to pay for it yourself. Right? And these are all things that older people will need regardless. Right? My mom wear glasses. I think she wears, I don't think, no, she doesn't have dentures, but she needs her, you know, her monthly or annual or whatever dent, dental checkup. Cardiovascular disease screening, that's included. Hearing aids, hearing aids. Like, here it is. Things that old people would actually need is not included. So guess what? Most people are going to have to come out of pocket and because they don't have it, they probably just going to die sooner or get ill because they're not going to pay for these things if they don't have the money. Physical therapy, that's included. Long-term care. You see, this is why you need your own private long-term care because the government ain't paying for that. You're going to have to pay for that on your own. And we're going to talk about the cost. It ain't cheap, right? It is not cheap. Most chiropractic and medical care overseas, you pay for that too. So there's a lot of things we're going to be paying for, right? A lot that most people have no clue until they get to that stage. Then they realize, wow, this is really killing me. Now, after you enroll, right, in part A and B, there's some additional coverage that you can take. And again, you got to pay for it. Guys, this is nothing new. We're just educating the public, right? We didn't make it up. These are things that the government put in place. We're just educating our community, right? Medicare Advantage, also known as part C, is combined of part A and B. And then you have the supplement. So again, in general, after your part B is deductible, met, you're responsible. Guys, I don't know about you, but all I'm seeing is I'm going to have to pay a lot of stuff, right? Are you guys getting the same feeling that all this Medicare stuff is like probably 80% is going to be on us and 20% the government is picking up? So will you pay for it with a credit card, with your retirement 401k? Or are you gonna ask your children for help? Well, if your children is not doing well, or maybe they're doing well, but they have their own family and their own expense, then you're at the mercy of, I don't know, maybe God, right? You're at the mercy of God, right? Because all this stuff is just costing more. For those people who are looking for more coverage, or planning for future need, this is what's known as Medicare Supplement or Medigap. Again, this is insurance plan that covers any out-of-pocket costs. But it's insurance, so you're paying for that too, right? So here are some things you need to know. Basic benefits are standardized among all plans. So benefits from plan G in one company will be the same from another. Therefore, you can shop around. Policies are guaranteed renewable. Even if you have health problems, your policy cannot be canceled. This is why I'm a big proponent of getting these things while you're young and you're healthy. Because once you're in, you're in. If your health change, they can kick you out. They can't change your price. You're already in, right? You got to get in there. Get in while you're young, while you're healthy, or get in while you have something going on right now, if you can, right? Because as we get older, it's just life. It's just human nature that things are going to change. Things are going to break down. Things are going to fall apart, you know? That's, that's how the body is, right? Some of us will probably deteriorate quicker than others, does not cover long-term care ltc needs such as a nursing home so if you have to be in a nursing home unless you are dead broke unless you have no assets unless you can show your income is zero or less than two thousand dollars in your bank account that's when the government is going to kick in prior to that you're going to be paying something right you're going to be paying it so do we have the money to pay for these things? Most of us don't, right? 
Let's talk about long-term care. And again, like I said, these things are prime example of what's going on right now with some of my clients, right? I have a client right now who got into some health crisis. They thought their job insurance was going to cover it. Yes, up to a point. But if you need to be admitted in a long-term care facility, which is over 100 days, now you got to pay for it, right? So Medicare and Medicare supplement can address medical and hospital-related costs, but they do not pay for most long-term care. So if you have cancer, if you have stroke, and certain illnesses require you to have more than 90 days or 100 days in a facility to care for you, you're going to have to pay for that. Now, your insurance might pick up a part, but then you also have to chip in the other part. And 9 out of 10 times, you're putting 80% or 75%, right? An example, let's say Mary broke her hip in a bike accident and after three days in the hospital she was admitted to a skilled nursing facility for a hundred days medicare will cover up to a hundred days if she needs to stay beyond a hundred days that's on her so now it puts the pressure on oh my god let me hurry and get let me hurry and get better so i can get out of here because i can't afford to stay here past a hundred days well, sometimes it may work out and sometimes you have to stay past 100 days depending on what the injury or, or illness is, right? So what can address these costs that Medicare and Medicare supplement does not? Long-term care. Man, I am telling y'all, if y'all don't stack up on long-term care, I don't know what else to tell y'all because I'm not saying this information the government is saying this information. It is black and white. It is all over. We're just telling you about it. So every one of you on my live, shout out to you, Lorraine. Shout out to you, Roxanne, Michelle Sparkle. If you guys that are on Zoom, you guys that are social major, do not have long-term care, I don't know what else to tell you. Maybe you don't care about if you get sick, right? Because it's not a matter of if you're going to get sick, it's when you're going to get sick. And I used to think if you have a lot of money, you're going to be okay. But in America, statistics shows the number one reason people go bankrupt is medical bills. So, long-term care it is. What is long-term care? It is your personal, right? It is personal and medical care needed if you become disabled due to age or any adverse health condition. For example, my brother, 37 year old, double amputee for the rest of his life. He's gonna need help. Double amputee. He's gonna need rest, help for the rest of his life. He'll probably be in a nursing home for the rest of his life, but not under my watch, right? Now, if you need help with bathing, dressing, eating, continence, toileting, transferring, you need long-term care because somebody has to help you. Somebody has to dress you. Somebody has to feed you. Somebody has to bathe you right somebody has to move you around you're gonna need help so the need for care statistics show 70 percent of adults who live to age 65 develop a severe ltc need and ltc is often associated with older people but illness can happen at any age my brother is 37 he ain't old right 48 percent of adult 18 and above are currently receiving some type of ltc long-term care benefit he's part of that 48 percent right so we know it's coming guys let's put things in place to help get the best care if and when it come 
and also not dwindle away our coins in a matter of two years. What are the costs of long-term care? Boy, we are in New York, but this is the national average. An adult daycare, $68 per day, which is about $17,000 per year. If you have a homemaker service, that's $20 per hour, $41,000 per year. Guys, some people are not even earning this. A home health aid. A lot of us know home health aid, right? In fact, I need one for my brother right now. Once he comes home, right? A home health aid is about $42,000 per year. Again, guys, this is some people's salary. So how are they going to afford to pay for these things if they're working for this income? If you go into an assisted living facility, that's $43,000. If you have a nursing home, in a nursing home with a semi-private room, $82,000. And if you have your private room in a nursing home, that's $92,000. Y'all, these are today's numbers. You want to be in a nice private room? In a nursing home? Almost $100,000 annually. How many people are working for 100,000 in the US? This is a problem, guys. This is a huge problem. How do you access long-term care? This is why, guys, when you become part of our campaign for national financial education, you're going to learn this and so much more. Because you see, there are policies that have long-term care as a rider does your life insurance policy has long-term care as a rider so many people tell me oh i have life insurance that's great but let me ask you do you have long-term care rider god forbid if you get sick not debt god forbid you get sick is it gonna pay you and how much is it gonna pay you do you have long-term care? I'm stacked up on long-term care. Happy to say that, right? But four years ago, I didn't know about these things. Four years ago, I didn't even have life insurance. Four years ago, I didn't know what long-term care is, right? These are all things that if we don't know, when we do find out about it, it's probably going to be too late. So are you thinking about care? Being now aware of these types of care, think about it. What would you do or what would you want for your mom or dad or yourself? Are you financially prepared? Do you know if and what you have fits your needs? I already have a plan for my parents. I know exactly what's going to happen with my mom. And I know exactly what's going to happen with my dad because I have things in place, right? How many of you can say the same? Are you financially prepared? We just told you Medicare costs is what's going to wipe out our wealth. What do we have to offset? What do we have to offset, right? So in summary, we can preserve and transfer our estate at any size. Some of us have bigger estate than others, right? So having it is good. Protecting it and preserving it to pass on to the next generation is the way to go. Developing a strategy now makes a difference. Do not wait until something happened. Because I can tell you, I have so many stories of people who didn't know this information or maybe they knew it, but they didn't act on it. And now when push come to shove and they have to force, they're forced now to act on it, they're exposed. Their assets are exposed so they can't get any government help. Their assets are exposed and they're literally going to watch it wipe away right in front of their eyes in a matter of years, right? Your health and your wealth is important. We want to be healthy and we want to be wealthy. If you're healthy and you're broke, you ain't going to enjoy life. And if you're wealthy and you're not healthy, you're still not going to enjoy life. So it goes hand in hand. We want to be healthy 
and we want to be wealthy. The health and wealth relationship can greatly impact your financial future because if you're healthy and you ain't got no money, it's going to impact your life. Vice versa, you have a lot of money, but you don't have the health to enjoy it, right? So while we have our health, we must take the appropriate action to develop a strategy that's going to build and maintain our wealth and then ultimately transfer it to create that hard earned legacy to the next generation. I am super, super big on generational wealth. I cannot wait to have my millionaire babies, but in the meantime, my nieces and nephews are going to be the next millionaires in our lifetime, in our family. So those of you that are part of our organization agents, in the next 24 to 40 hours, your task is those of you who do not have your license, you want to get your license, right? By signing up for Excel to start studying for your license, we do have a boot camp this coming Sunday to help you study and pass your license so you could get your momentum watch, okay? Hurry and make your first thousand dollars in this building in this business so you can have your momentum watch right and make sure that you first get the help by finalizing your personal financial strategy because you see when we start here we're gonna help ourselves first i'm not gonna tell you go get your long-term care if i don't have my long-term care i can't tell you go save money if i'm not saving money i can't tell you go get a life insurance if i don't have a life insurance I can't tell you go get a will if I don't have a will. So you're going to get your help first. And it puts you in the driver's seat. I'm so proud. Tonight I had a client with one of, um, I think Rolling is on here. We were with another um, faculty teacher. And I was so happy to show her my, 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 my IUL. Like the questions she was asking, I said, hey, let me show you. Let me show you how it, how it works. And I logged in on the portal and I showed her exactly my accounts, right? So when you have these things for yourself, it gives you pride and it shows that you're truly confident about these things that you're telling people to get because you own it, right? You own it. So with that being said, every Wednesday, the topic is different, right? I believe the next topic for Wednesday will be, actually, I'm really not sure. I think it might be retirement planning or asset accumulation. So you guys can come as many times every Wednesday, 8 p.m. The topic is different. And tomorrow and Friday, we are actually expanding, right? Yes, we are expanding. Our company is preparing for 2022. And all of the this week and next week, we're going to be in hiring mode. We're going to be in interview mode. So if you know anyone who wants to learn this information and share it with their community, please have them get in touch with us so we can get them registered for the business overview tomorrow and Friday. And with that being said, thank you guys so much. Make it a great evening and we'll see you back here tomorrow night, 8 p.m. if you want to learn more about the business opportunity. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. Bye Facebook.